Welcome to February's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is shortest unsorted continuous subarray. Given an integer array, you need to find one continuous subarray that if you only sort this subarray in ascending order, then the whole array will be sorted. Return the shortest such subarray and output its length. So if we had an example like this, uh, we could see that if we just sorted from this array on to up to here 9, if we just sorted this part, then the entire array would be sorted. Here with these arrays, these are already sorted, so we don't have to sort anything. And there's a follow-up, can you do this in O of n? Uh, but let's start off by trying to solve this very straightforwardly. Uh, say we had this array here. Uh, how would we figure out what is the continuous subarray that we want to sort? Well, let's sort it first and see like if we can find any insights here. If we had, uh, if we just sorted the original array and made it sorted the whole thing, what would it look like? It looks something like 9, 10, 15, something like this, right? Now, we already know that the answer is this. What do we see um, comparing these two is the case? Well, basically, we can see that whenever the numbers are different, if we check to see our sorted nums, uh, it's going to be this. Basically, everything's going to be different, right? And really, what we're trying to find is the leftmost index number where the numbers are different and the rightmost index number where everything is different. And once we have that, we can just subtract the two and get the length of the subarray that we want to sort to get it to be sorted. So let's start off with that. That's a um, relatively straightforward method. Let's first create a temporary array and we're going to call it nums2. We'll sort the nums and we'll also initialize a couple of variables. We'll say n equals length of nums and uh, we'll also need to sort the left and rightmost, right? So left and right. Left, we're going to start off with n and right, we're going to start off with zero uh, because we assume that if there's something unsorted this is gonna be less than n and it's gonna be greater than zero right okay so for i n in enumerate nums we want to get the index number uh, we want to check this compare these two we want to say if nums i does not equal nums 2.i then we know uh, these aren't sorted in this position so we should store the uh, leftmost and rightmost. So to get the left, we will do, let's see, L equals the minimum between L and I, while right is going to be the maximum between R and I. All right, so once we break out of here, um, we know that if like these have remained unchanged, that means the array is completely sorted, so we don't need to do anything. So if L still equals N, then we could go ahead and return zero because it's already sorted. Otherwise, we're going to subtract R, L, and we also need add one because these are zero index numbers. And this is gonna give us the length of the array that needs to be sorted. It's gonna be from here to here. So let's make sure this works. Looks like it's working, submit it. There we go, accepted. So this is um, n log n time complexity, also use o, o of n space. Uh, but there's that follow-up, right? We want to do it in O of n time. The reason this is accepted probably is because sorting is pretty efficient in Python. Um, but say that this wasn't very efficient, like could we do this in one pass? Yeah, so um, to do that, there's a couple methods. The one that I'm going to do is why don't we go through our numbers and create a stack where we're going to add to our stack as long as um, the array is still sorted. How can we do that? Well, like say we add two first into our stack here, and then we add six, it's all sorted, but then we have four. Uh, well, this isn't sorted, right? So we're gonna have to pop off the numbers that aren't sorted and then add that four in here. Now, what does this number six tell us? Well, we know that at this index number, this isn't sorted, right? So we need to store that number here as to be the minimum uh, leftmost. And we're gonna actually have to go backwards and also find the rightmost as well. We can do that by storing the max value of the numbers that aren't sorted. Whatever we have to pop off, we know it's like not sorted in the correct order uh, and store whatever max values in there. And when we do that, we can just start from the right and then move to the left, find that max number in the unsorted array and say, okay, whatever that index number is, return that. And then we'll just return our minus um, L plus one again. Okay, so let's go with that method. First, we'll create a stack, and we will also initialize n. We'll also have r and l. 
Um, actually, we're not going to start with R. We're going to start with storing that max value in our unsorted array, right? So we'll have our left and we'll have our max. Now, max, uh, left is going to start with N, but max is going to just be, let's say, a uh, the minimum most number, uh, just to make sure, since we have no idea like how big, small these values can get. So we'll add that and get rid of this. Okay, so for we need the INN again, so enumerate nums. Remember, this is not sorted. Uh, what will we do? Well, if there's a stack and the last item in the stack, and I should mention, in our stack, we want these to be like tuples. We're going to have the index number and the number here. Uh, that way, we can just keep track of it easily. You don't technically need that. You can like write it so that you could just look it up using the index number, but I just, I'm just going to do that because it's a little bit more intuitive. Uh, so if stack, the last one in the stack, and the number, which is the second element, if that's greater than our number that we have now, we know we need to pop it off because that's unsorted. We know that's not in sorted order. So we'll pop that off. And using this candidate, what we popped off, we're going to store our left most, which is going to be the minimum uh, between left and candidate, what, zero. And we're going to store our max value, which is going to be the max of R and candidate 1. Okay, make sure to add to our stack after that a tuple of the I and N. Okay, so now we should have our left and right. Uh, first thing to check is, look, if L is equal to N, that means everything that we've added went in order and L still remains N. Uh, we know that it's already sorted then, so return a zero. Otherwise, we have our leftmost left point, but now we need to find our right. So to do that, I'll just say for i in range of n minus one minus one minus one. Uh, we'll say, look, if let's think um, from the rightmost, we need to find the value if it's less than our max. Then we know that's not sorted, right? Yeah, I believe that's right. So if nums.i is less than our max here, then we need to store our right. And I need to store right here as well. Right, we'll start with zero. And now right will equal i. And we just need to break our loop immediately after that because we don't need to check anything more. Uh, we already know uh, what the max value is in our unsorted array. And if we find our that's different at this point, then we know that's going to be the right side. Okay, so now we have our left and right. Uh, just we need return r minus l plus one. And that should be it. Let me make sure this works. Ugh. Local variable r isn't stored. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not r there. It's max. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. Great. So this is all of n time. Um, it does use all of n space because of our stack. Now there are solutions where you could do it in all of n using constant space, uh, but they're pretty mathematical. Um, you know, using like local and global minimums and stuff. And I didn't really find it intuitive. If you're really interested in that, I'd say check it out. Otherwise, I think these solutions are fine. So yeah, we'll stick with this. All right. So thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.